Do you voluntarily consent to the recording and publication of this video? Yes. Your name? Date and place of birth? Korninko Danila Yurievich, city of Nepropovosk. Nepropovosk. Date of birth? July 13th, the year 1990. All right. What is your article and term of imprisonment? 15 years. Big. Big. What were you convicted of? Coordinate transfer. I see. Yes. Was it? Did you transmit the coordinates? It was in my hands. Yes. Did you intentionally do it to help RF in its aggression? Or was it an amusing conversation with a friend? At that point I didn't know that there was such a punishment here and serious responsibility for all of this, that I would end up here, I didn't think about it. You didn't know? I didn't realize. I think with your friend there will be communication, it will be more complete. About what he was passing on and what he knew. You didn't know and he knew, although he can also say he didn't know and that he had another friend, a third. I don't know that. But you're grateful to him? We're done talking about the case. We're just communicating like normal people, so you don't have to talk about the sentence. I get it. Many things have been relegated not to the second, but even to some 50th or 100th plan, there is only one desire to get out of confinement. Some problems, some turmoil, some resentments all of it now seems so insignificant compared to a 15-year sentence. My only hope is to go on exchange and be free. Do you have a family? Yes, there's a son. Are you married? A son? What will you do? Do you want to take them there too? Well, after, after the exchange and I can leave. Do you think you will be exchanged? A citizen of Ukraine will be given instead of you and you will be given full freedom of action there? I don't know what it is, you have more information. Right now my goal is at least to just survive, to survive this whole situation and to be free. That's the plan I have. And what happens next is so vague that I can't even speculate about it. What's gonna happen? Who will take who away? Now my son is abroad in Poland, he is studying at school there. It's all extremely sad. What will happen in the future, I have no idea. I don't know at all. Is your wife in here? Is she doing okay? Is she living as she used to? It's so hard. Clearly not all is well in your situation. Yes, my ex-wife and son are in Poland. So you're married? I am married for the second time. The thing is that my son lived with me, and I did a lot for this, including buying my own house. My son lived with me. I created conditions so that in case of court, determination of the place of residence and everything else, I would have the right to have the child live with me. But. <clears throat> Then on February 24th I sent my son and ex-wife, they went west and then they left the country. Because the situation was very unstable because of the constant bombing, we lived in the kitchen, shivering from it. Now I don't know if I will see my son, because the very process of agreeing with my ex-wife to have him live with me was very difficult. Did she say yes? Yes, because of the danger, you understand. Do you have forfeiture on your conviction? Yes, confiscation of all property. Still, 
I wonder if you would repeat all this way if you knew in advance what all this threatens. I've thought about it many times. The answer would probably go something like this. A long time ago I would have just left the country and been far away from all of this. Where to? Anywhere. It was on my mind. IT people mostly migrate to Europe, so I thought about it. Including from Russia? For a number of reasons, I decided to stay here after all, bought a house and settled in my hometown. At some point became hostage to the situation because I can't leave because of an anchor in the form of a house I've been saving for all my life. The first three days it was still possible to cross the border and leave, but I didn't do it, then there was no such opportunity. Bottom line, it's extremely sad, I'm here, no home, sun god knows where, at least he's safe there. What's the answer? I'd just leave. Transmission of information, but why? I give you information. I share it with you, if a shell arrives, I call one of my comrades, what is my motive? I'm motivated purely for the sake of sharing information. But if I start walking around town taking pictures and sending videos, those actions don't look like a desire to share information. Too many episodes for a man who has no motive. We were bombed very often, and we were accustomed to taking pictures of everything. Now people take pictures and film everything first. I'm filming everything. You are exaggerating. First you need to help a person or call an ambulance, and then you can take pictures. We, and the whole world, have such a problem now. Everybody does it. Yes, what is there to be surprised about when the bombing is filmed? I'm trying to believe your words that you did it without malice, just sharing with a friend, and since everyone takes pictures and video of everything, it's okay for you to do it. Right? Moving on. The most interesting episodes, which were in Crimea and so on, we talked to you about it. And I understand the contingent you are talking to here. I assume that you probably used to use some Russian chat rooms, Russian channels, YouTube channels. Textbooks. You've been using it all for a long time. But Russia has been bombarding us for a year and a half with missiles, bombs and everything else. Isn't that a reason not to like her? Sit down at the negotiating table and communicate. Why does this keep happening? That it's impossible to find common ground with a neighbor you've had for so many years before? What's the problem now? How did we find common ground for so many years? What have we found common ground in? How do you see the conflict ending? Assuming that the Russian and Ukrainian sides sat down to negotiate, what would they agree on? This is such a voluminous question, I can't answer it now. What would you do? Would you give up the territory of Ukraine? We need to sit down and talk about it. It is necessary, it is not necessary, but there are not many precedents. For this purpose, commissions should meet, for example, as in Saudi Arabia, to try to resolve all this. It's better than just shooting at each other, we should go back to dialogue at any stage. Russia invades, starts bombing us, including the children we talked about. Could they love Russia? Why would they love her? Because she's throwing missiles at us? Russia does this because it feels it needs to do so. We have to sit down at the table, and what are we supposed to say? I'm just trying to understand on a purely diplomatic level. Now they do not sit at the same table, there is no dialogue. 
there should be a hundred, five hundred mediators in this matter. If they sit down at the same negotiating table, compared to the current situation, it will just be progress. What progress? We've been sitting at the negotiating table since the 14th year. The Normandy format, the trilateral contact group, before that the Minsk agreements. It was a great process of negotiations. As you say, there seem to be negotiations, but at one point Putin makes a different decision. You're the one talking. You're saying they were normal up to that point and then they became barbarians. No, they were never normal, he just ignores the negotiations and starts a special operation. I don't know. The Minsk agreements, the trilateral contact group in the Normandy format. Have you heard about it? I heard. There was a negotiation going on. That was until Putin declared a special operation and started doing what he started. What other negotiations are needed? Is that better? <laughs> so it's not our decision, it's his decision, you know what I mean? It was decided by the aggressor side, the invasion is their decision, not ours. I was trying to understand how you think, and I get it. <sighs> really, it's a stalemate. Yes? Have you decided what to talk to the aggressor about? Thank you for communicating. I, Daniel Georgievich Kornenko, on July 13, 1990, sentenced to 15 years under Article 111, Part 2. I ask the Russian Federation to pick up on exchange. I, a journalist. Your name, date and place of birth? Shestopola Vladimir Viktorovich, the 4th January of the 68th year, Krasny Lyman, Donetsk region. Was Krasny Lyman under occupation? Yes. What period? From the 1st of June through the 1st of October. All right. 22nd year. Did you, during this period, cooperate with the occupation authorities? I didn't cooperate with the authorities, I cooperated with the troops. Do you give your consent to the recording and publication of this conversation? Yes. What's your article? What's your sentence? What were you convicted of? Article 111, Super Note 1, Part 7, Transfer of Data on the Movement of Ukrainian Troops to the Russian Federation, 14 years. Passed it on? Passed it on. A lot? More than 30 times. I see. Yes. Bombed the places you reported? Nothing flew in while I was out there. You were in Krasny Lehman? Yes. You've been discovered? A man came to my classmate's page, as if he was fighting for the DNR, he said he was a local. He's local, he just asked for information, I briefly described the situation, and literally three days later they came and picked it up. Where did you send the information? In the DNR. What is your motive for your actions? I am against Nazi Ukraine from 2014 and beyond with all the events and consequences in the DNR. Because I come from the town of Yugogorsk, I went there to visit my mother, and I saw everything that was going on. What? How Ukraine shells cities and civilians. Weren't they shooting at Ukraine from that side? No shots were fired from that side. Are all the bunnies in there fluffy? When there were hostilities, they were firing, and when there was a regime of silence, why were there no firing from that side, but there were raids from the Ukrainian side? The OSCE drives around town, sees it all, but nothing. The OSCE recorded all of this, shelling from both the Russian and Ukrainian sides. I understand when troops are standing and troops are being shot at but when they bomb a city where the military is not. Did you see that it was Ukrainians? Yes. 
How did you see it? Because they were in Svetlodarsk, and from us to Svetlodarsk is 12 kilometers. Why don't you think it could have been Russian and Ukrainian military facing each other? Did the Russians deploy grads and use them to shell? No. No? No. It can't be? No. The Russian won't shoot? I'm not sure, but from where they are, they didn't fire. Being in Krasny Lyman I saw Ukraine shooting and Russia coming in, and Russia coming out and Ukraine shooting when they gave the Green Corridor on October 29. Mm -hmm. They specifically shelled the town because I was there at the time of the shelling. We have the Krasnoy Lyman forestry, which was bombed to smithereens, even though there were no Russians there. They hid houses, shops, everything was smashed and burned. That's how it is. I'm going to show you a video, watch it, just give me your opinion. Look, the video is five minutes long. They show a map of where the shelling is coming from and where it is going. Can you see well? All right. Locations are shown for authenticity. Where did the shelling come from? Direction of fire in Ukraine in Shervanopartrzansk, Lugansk region. Now news from July 16th militants shelled auto forces from Grad. The dates are given. These settlements were shelled from Grad by militants. The source says that Shervanoportrzansk was shelled from Grads. The shelling started and it is recorded who shelled Shervanoportrzansk and killed residents of Luhansk region. They said it was the Ukro Nazis who shelled them. That's it. The cars shot off hard. Tell everyone in Chita, Lioka. I wish they could see it in Norilska, where I live. Look how many people there are. The shelling of Krasnopartizansk from the territory of the Russian Federation was recorded, but at that time Krasnopartizansk in the Luhansk region was not occupied, and people were being summoned there for a referendum. Since it was already occupied, but this nonsense has not been done there yet, and in order to call people to a referendum, to say that the evil Ukro-Nazis are shelling them, they are being shot at from the territory of Russia. What can you say? I haven't been there, I don't know, filming is one thing. I'm talking specifically about the places I've been and what I've seen, so I can't say anything about that. Do you know Gherkin Strelkov? I heard. You've heard this text. We Russians pulled the trigger of the war when they entered Slaviansk with their group. I don't know what Gherkin said there, I'm not familiar with him, I don't follow him. Do you think the Ukrainians would have fired on Donbass if the Russians hadn't gone in there? So the Russians weren't there. Who's Gherkin? Who is he? Yes. I don't know. No, you don't. Do you know this one? Take a look. You know him? No. It's Motorola. You know him? No. He's Russian. Where's he shooting at? I don't know. I don't know him. That is, you will not be convinced by any video or documentary facts that I can show you, also by the columns of Russian equipment that drive in there. Wait, let's, let's see some other documentary footage. I listened to you. You said there were no Russians there. I see. If the Russians hadn't gone in, would it have been a war or not? If it wasn't for Euromaidan, there would be no war. Euromaidan? And who? Where to? Wait. Who shelled Donetsk? Who shelled Mariupol on May 9th? 
Euromaidan came, as you say, but it wasn't exactly Euromaidan, it was people speaking with Ukrainian flags in Donetsk. They were beaten there, and some of them were killed, and that's how it all started. No. How not? It started with military equipment coming in, there is video of people being stopped in Andrivka near Slavyansk. That's right, but that was after, and I'll show you what was before. I'll show you what else was going on back then. This is March 9, 2014, there has been no war yet. This is separatists tearing down Ukrainian flags, throwing them, stomping on them. Keep watching. Yes. This one. I saw that. Did you see that? You haven't seen this one, have you? No. Look, it's Donetsk. March 13, 2014, Donetsk. More than 10,000 people came to the central square of the city for a large-scale rally for a united Ukraine. More than 10,000 came out and 400 men dispersed them. That's another day. The demonstration turned into a brutal massacre of Ukrainian opposition activists arranged by Titushki. Specially hired people to organize provocations, they were brought to Donetsk from Russia. Locals noted a peculiar accent. They pelted the protesters with firecrackers, smoke bombs and beat them mercilessly. Despite the fact that people were guarded by security forces, no one stopped the clashes between the participants. The first death in Donbass. As a result of clashes, 22-year-old Dmitro Chernyovsky was killed. Posthumously the guy received the title of Hero of Ukraine, and will join the Heavenly Hundred. It turns out that the inhabitants of Donbass were killed not by evil Ukrainians, but on the contrary, some Russian, Titushki, killed a guy with a Ukrainian flag, in the Ukrainian Donbass. Yeah, but it's all coming from the Ukrainian side. What's coming from the Ukrainian side? You show the video with your voiceover, but let's look at the flip side. What exactly is there to look at on the back side? How Gorlovka was shelled. Gorlovka was shelled? I'm trying to draw a parallel. You want me to show you a video about Russia? The alternative would be to come to the negotiating table. With who? You just have to talk to people. What kind of people? The referendum passed, but Don Bass voted for autonomy. Were you at this referendum? No. How do you know what the Don Bass voted for? On the news. Here are two ballots that were in the Don Bass. I can't see very well. Do you support the independence of the Luhansk People's Republic? The Donetsk People's Republic? Yes? No? What are you saying? Autonomy in definition, is the same as autonomy. Are you sane? I'm sane. Autonomy, is that independence? Vladimir Viktorovich Shostopolov, born on January 4, 1968. Article 111, Supra Note 1, Part 7, for transmitting data to the territory of the Russian Federation on the movement of Ukrainian troops. I want to be traded. Autonomy is what Crimea had as part of Ukraine, and the independence they voted for is independence. Autonomy implies self-determination of the state. No. 
Independence is independence, secession or no secession. Separatism. They voted in a referendum, which you weren't at, for secession, not some autonomy. And if Russia hadn't gone in there, there would have been no war, no deaths, nothing would have happened. Regarding that episode where people stopped Ukrainian tanks with their hands, if they had not stopped them there, this war would not have happened, because the tanks were on their way to defend the border of their state, Ukraine. How much did you get? I've been working without money. How many years did they give you? Fourteen. Fourteen years. All righty. If you don't get traded, will you last fourteen years? Ah, uh, sure. That's it. Thank you, goodbye. If they don't take you away, will you start thinking differently about Russia? No. Still a patriot? I don't change. You're on their side. But you're kind of theirs, so they have to trade you. They'll take me away. If they don't, then what? I'll do my time in jail and get out. So if you don't get picked up, you've been scammed? Ukrainian military all returned from captivity? We want them back. I say they're trying, which means both sides need it. No. You go. I got it. What do we do with these guys after they've done their time? Huh? He'll do his time and he'll be out.